previously on this channel, lime plastering has been shown to consist of throwing plaster at a wall and then smoothing it with a trowel. And this usually resulted in the undercoat having small cracks. Here we show a better technique where that doesn't happen. There are no cracks in the undercoat after it is dried. And we're going to show it via this project that was recently completed, which consisted of restoring the lime plaster along the outer edges of the wall that was not in good shape and had been covered in latex paint by a previous owner, and then applying new plaster around the perimeter of the window that was just installed. This alternative technique was hit upon when someone new in the shop, instead of throwing the plaster at the wall, decided to press a relatively dry plaster into the wall, compact it with a lot of force, and also apply a lot of pressure when smoothing it with the finishing trowel. This particular batch happened to contain animal hair in addition to the typical ingredients of slaked lime, sand, and water, but it was still a much better result than had been seen previously with the technique of throwing a wet plaster at the wall and smoothing without expressly compacting it. When plaster is thrown to the wall, there are a couple of disadvantages. One, it can spatter and get in your eyes, which can be harmful as well as painful. And two, it can fall to the floor. With this technique, neither of those problems arise, but it is a little bit more time consuming to apply. Here the technique of compacting the plaster into the wall is being used to apply plaster to recently laid brickwork. And in another break from convention, the undercoat of plaster was applied just two days after the brickwork was finished. In this way, the plaster is applied to the mortar before the mortar has completely dried and had time to form a center layer. This plastering sand has typically been used on this channel to make lime plaster. It contains grains of size 0 to 4 millimeters. For this project, quartz sand was also added, which is a much finer sand containing granules that are 0 to 0.5 millimeters in size. This made the final recipe two parts quartz sand, two parts plastering sand, and one part slaked lime. After applying new plaster around the window, it was time to scrape and sand away the latex paint covering the original lime plaster elsewhere on the wall. With the latex paint removed, the wall can again absorb water and will be dampened before a new overcoat is applied. Areas of low adherence can be identified by listening for a hollow sound when the wall is tapped. A hollow sound in and of itself doesn't necessarily mean that the plaster will fail, and since there are no visual signs of a problem, it's decided that the original plaster will be kept and a new overcoat applied. Once again, the plaster, made with relatively little water, is pressed into the wall instead of being thrown. After about 20 minutes, the surface is smoothed with a sponge. The next day, casein paint is applied, which consists of 450 grams skim milk, 180 grams chalk, 18 grams of ochre pigment, and 6 teaspoons slaked lime. Casing paint has now been applied to the entire surface. The differences in color will disappear as the paint dries. The project took about three buckets of lime plaster to complete, which was applied a little each day over five days. And here is the final product. It has now been one week since the casing paint was applied and the color has equalized. Each day during that week, the wall was sprayed with water to help the layers adhere as they dry. As you can see, no cracks have appeared and the wall looks great.
Also ein voller Erfolg.